students. In front of you is Madam Charity. I would like us to uh, I would like to introduce a new topic, topic two in our secretarial duties. Last lesson we were looking at topic one, where we had the introduction. We looked at the organizational structures, and we also looked at uh, we also looked at the the importance of organizational structures and the the purpose of the organizational structures. We also looked at the office and we also looked at the functions of the office, both administrative office functions and also basic functions of the office. So today we are we are beginning topic uh, topic two where we are going to look at the secretarial role and function, secretarial role and functions. And in this uh, topic, we shall be talking about the roles that are played by the secretaries in the office and also the, the qualities of a good secretary. We are going to look at the, the qualities of a good secretary and we are also going to see that uh, the qualities of a good secretary are subdivided into business attributes and the personal attributes. And we, also, we are also going to look at the secretarial relationship with the executive. This is the relationship between the secretary or between the worker and the employer. This is the executive, your boss. How the secretary should relate with a boss. And we are also going to look at the, the, the secretarial relationship with the staff. How a sec secretary should relate with our colleagues in the organization where she is working. So we are going to look at those relationships and how she should behave with the other, the other colleagues in the organization. The, the other part we are going to look at the safeguards for handling confidentiality. As a secretary, you must keep the top secrets of the organization, the top secrets of your boss, and the top secrets of the work that you are doing in the organization. So a secretary should be that person who can keep the top secrets and the top confidentiality in the organization. So we are going to look at how a secretary can safeguard a, a confidential documents, confidential matters in the organization and in the office, uh, as well as on how she can handle the the, the 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 information which is confidential in the office so we are going to look at that briefly so we are going to begin with the introduction to the secretarial role and function and here we have interpersonal skills for secretaries are involved in we have uh, uh, six points here that are, are giving us the role the major and the, the main roles of a secretary uh, one of them is establishing and maintaining effective working relationship, supervising and supporting the junior staff. A good secretary will always supervise and support the junior staff, the staff who are working under her, under him. So you should be supervising them for the work that they are doing. Another one is identifying and solving problems using judgment and initiative. So a, a good secretary should also be in a position to identify in case of the problem, to identify the problem in the office and also to have a way of solving such problems and make the right judgments, the right uh, uh, judgments and the use our own initiative to solve such problems. Another one is in influencing others and negotiating successfully with them, influencing others and negotiating with them successfully. This is whereby a secretary will be able to, uh, is, is uh, required to influence the others to work, to work uh, in the organization and not to influence them in a negative way, but to influence them in the positive way and also negotiating, coming together and then having a coordination of the work and agreeing on what they are supposed to do. And at the end of it all, they come, 
they, they come successful in their work, in their clinical work in the office. The other one is communicating effectively with others to coordinate administrative procedures. Communicating effectively with others to coordinate administrative uh, procedures. So a good secretary should be able to communicate. Communicating both to the junior staff, communicating also to the, to the members of the organization where possible, communicating also to, the, uh, to her own executive or to her own boss, and make sure that uh, she coordinates well. She works hand in hand. She, works with, uh, uh, she has a teamwork to coordinate with the administrative procedures, to follow the procedures that have been formulated and laid down by the management. Then we are going to look at the, the secretarial role. Those are the roles that are played by the secretary now. The, the normal duties of a, of a good secretary. And one is that uh, a good secretary is in charge of keeping the employees uh, the employer's diary and arranging appointments and engagements. A good secretary will be in charge of uh, keeping the employer's diary, make sure that whatever she has handled in her own diary, she also handle it in the uh, her employer's diary uh, in order to update the employer on the appointment that he has made with the clients and the visitors who come in the organization and also any other engagement maybe the employer has a meeting somewhere to attend the diary the employer's diary will help him to to uh, to help him to remember to be able to get the reminder on what he is supposed to do so the secretary should make sure that he enter the, the employer's diary well and update it daily another one is making travel arrangements and booking hotels for the employer. This is uh, in the case where your employer is to travel to a place uh, far, far from the organization, somewhere where he has to spend. Then the secretary should ensure that uh, he makes the, the, the local arrangements on the travel arrangements. He books the, uh, he books the, the, the bus if, it's, if the, the employer is to use the bus or he books the flights. And also he makes sure that uh, he books the hotel where the employer is supposed to spend in advance. This is, be, this is supposed to be done in advance. The other one is supervising junior secretarial staff. The, the, the junior staff, the subordinate staff who work be, uh, under the secretary, he, he or she is supposed to supervise them on the work they are doing. The other one is handling mail for executive using his own initiative. As most of the time the employers they they, they leave the office, they, go, they attend some other meetings outside the, the organization. And in the case when the employer is away, the secretary should be able to use her own initiative to handle the mails and also by attending the visitors who come in the organization. The other one is undertaking reception duties where she will be in charge of uh, receiving the visitors and making them feel welcome. Uh, in the case where we, uh, they do not have a receptionist, so the secretary should undertake the reception uh, duties. Another one is the importance link between executive and various conducts Ensuring, the, uh, ensuring that uh, there, there is a good link, good uh, uh, link between the executive and other organizations and other clients whom they work with. So a secretary is the one who is supposed to link, to link the, uh, uh, the lawyer with the different organization and with the different people this is through uh, through making sure that she has all the extension lines of uh, telephone communication through the telephone and making sure that she has the contact for most of the 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 potential customers and the visitors who come regularly to the organization the other uh, role is communications uh, communication 
communication should uh, should as uh, communication should be effective should have communicate effective communication where possible by communicating issues in advance and reporting the matters where possible uh, in case of anything she is supposed to report any matter that uh, is supposed to be handled by the boss or by the other staff executes personal res uh, represent uh, repre representative so she executes the personal representative so she is supposed to uh, to represent the the executive she is the one who represents the executive she is a representative to the organization she represents the boss she represents the entire organization so she is the one to give uh, the a good impression of the entire organization and this is by making sure that uh, uh, she is very polite and the way she handles the, the, the visitors who come in the organization and also the other staff whom she works with. Another one is handling telephone calls. She is be, uh, she's supposed to be uh, able to handle both incoming and outgoing calls. Both incoming and outgoing calls. This is by making sure that she handles the calls that come from outside the organization and also make the calls uh, outside the organization by making the calls to the clients whom they, uh, they transact the business with. The other one is by receiving dictations and transcribing them. In the case where she is required to receive dictation from the, the executive, in case the executive wants to leave a message or an is supposed to be ready to receive the dictations and transcribe them into long and in, uh, later. The other one is by attending meetings and taking minutes. During the meeting, the secretary is required to attend the meeting personally or in person and make sure that she takes down the minutes of the meeting. And then she is also in charge of filing a lawyer's personal and business correspondence. The secretary should also be in a position to keep files. Uh, file all the documents necessary for the employer and also for the organization. So she keeps the filing documents both for personal and for business correspondence. Then uh, the other one is supply information. She is supposed to supply information. For example, if uh, there is a meeting to be held uh, some days to come, she is supposed to prepare the notice of agenda uh, in advance and also supply that, those uh, notices to the members who are, are supposed to attend the meeting. Or she can also email them uh, through their emails in hand advance. Then the next part is the qualities of a good secretary or the secretary's qualities. The secretary's qualities or qualities of a good secretary. And these ones we divide them into two. Uh, we, we divide them into business attributes and the personal attributes. Business attributes is whereby the secretary is supposed to have language skills. Secretariat and language skills those are the business attributes. She should be able to speak fluently in English and also in uh, Kiswahili and any other language that is she is required to, to speak. So she should have uh, good skills in language. And the other one is organizing skills. Uh, organizing skills. She should be in a position to organize any matters pertaining to the organization. She should be in a position to organize. She should have good skills of organizing uh, events and anything that she's doing in the office. The other one is efficiency. Another business attribute is efficiency. She should be efficient enough in a business. At whatever she's doing in the office, she should be efficient enough. She should work efficiently without backtracking in for me, uh, the work or without delay without delay she should be working uh, with a lot of it uh, she should be uh, work with a lot of efficiency in our work 
The other one is reliability, responsibility, and discretion. So she should be reliable enough and also responsible enough when it comes to our work that in, even when the boss is away, in the case when the executive is away, she should be relied upon. Somebody who is trustworthy that uh, the employer will be able to rely upon him or her. So she should be reliable and also responsible in her uh, dealings in the office. The other one is initiative, uh, tact and diplomacy. She should be tactic and diplomatic. That is to make sure that uh, she uses her own initiative. She uses her own initiative in a manner that she can handle the, the visitors, even those people who are complicated who comes in the organization, that she, she knows how to handle them with a lot of wisdom and with a lot of uh, tactic uh, skills. So she should be tactic and diplomatic. The other one is punctuality. She should be punctual at her workplace. Uh, she should be the one coming early, uh, the first person to arrive early in the workplace and also to leave late where possible. So she should be punctual at all time. Loyal and committed to the job. A good secretary should also be loyal and committed to her job. When you are loyal, you, you like your job you like your, your, your boss, you like everything to do with your work, and you are, you are dedicated and very much committed to your work. So a good secretary should be loyal and committed to the job that she is doing. The other one is a dispute, a, a anticipation to needs. She should also be a dispute, a, a dispute to the needs of the other uh, staff, the other junior staff. Or in other words, we see that uh, she should be uh, uh, she should be sympathetic in a way that uh, she is able she is sensitive to the needs of the other colleagues. She is not ignorant to the needs of the other colleagues uh, or the staff that she works with. The other one is good appearance. A good secretary should have good appearance. That is both. Uh, uh, in her dressing and even in uh, the way she approaches her work. So she should have good appearance. And the other one is personality and sense of, uh, of humor. Personality and sense of humor. So she should have personality, good character. That is the personality we are talking about. She should possess good character, uh, respectful, and she should be somebody who is honest and somebody who is uh, uh, can be depended upon and uh, somebody who has hum humanity within her that she minds about the welfare of her, her colleagues the other one is adaptability and willing to learn she should be that person who is willing to to learn in case she is corrected she is willing to cor to be corrected she is willing to Adapt even to the new systems of work. Another one is desire to have knowledge to work. She should be that person who is academically oriented, who is ready to have, as a desire in herself, to have the knowledge to her work, that she is ready to improve in her, in her skills where possible. Then interest in business. She should that, be that person who is interested in the business that she is doing. She should also have courtesy. Courtesy is somebody who uh, she uses the right language in uh, in all the time when she she in case she has done wrong, she can say I'm sorry, excuse me, sir. What can I do for you in case a visitor comes? So those are the cautious words that she can use. She should be somebody who is as courtesy in her. Then uh, the other one is somebody who can tolerate working under pressure. Somebody who can tolerate working under pressure. And that is the case where there is a lot of work in the office. Instead of complaining, she'll be ready to work hard in order to, to complete the work, despite the pressure in the work. And then we have personal 
attributes. The other qualities are under personal attributes. And the personal attributes, this is uh, uh, just willingness to work. She should be that person who has willingness to work. You are not forced to work, but you work with a lot of willingness. Able to carry out routine tasks on her own and make necessary arrangements in the absence of the executive. She should be that person who can uh, carry out the routine task on her own with, uh, uh, in the absence of the boss. That is uh, without supervision. She can work on her own and also make some arrangements. Make sure that everything is in order even in the absence of the, of the boss. She should be punctual. We have talked about punctuality also. We have also said that she should be loyal to immediate boss and to her business. That is the case where she is very loyal. Somebody who is loyal you like. You mind about your boss, you mind about your business and you, you, you are ready to work hard to see the success or to achieve the goals of the, of the business, of the organization. Should have good and smart appearance conducive to our working environment and those who are around her. This is the case where she should uh, appear good and also smart. She should dress smart, decently, so she should not dress in fancy dressings that are not conducive to our working place and also those who are around her. So she should not make other people complain about her dressing, about her appearance. So she should be mindful about her smart appearance uh, when she is going to her workplace. Then we move to the relationship, secretarial relationship with executive. Uh, the secretary should relate well with her own executive, that is uh, her own boss. Uh, in order to work effectively and to be efficient in our work and also to work well, she should be, should be able to relate well with her boss or with the executive. So one should uh, do the work accurately. She should make sure that she, work the work, she does her work accurately without mistake, free from errors in order uh, to avoid any complaints from the executive. She should deal diplomatically with the telephone inquiries and be uh, entrusted with confidential matters. A good secretary should, should act with a lot of diplomacy, with a lot of wisdom, with a lot of understanding uh, different characteristics of different people and also handle even the callers through the, the telephone. She should be able to handle them with a lot of diplomacy that she can answer every question with a lot of diplomacy, with a lot of wisdom. And also she should be uh, trusted with the confidential matters. She should, be, she should not be that person who can disclose the matters of the, the office anyhow, anytime, uh, even the confidential matters of the boss of the executive. Uh, so she should be that person who can be trusted with the confidential matters of the, the organization and the confidential matters of the other colleagues and of the, of the boss. She should be ready to stay late when required. In order to relate well with the executive, she should be ready to stay up to the late hours. In the case where there is a the, during the peak periods when there is a lot of work in the organization, she should be ready to stay late or to work even uh, after the late hours. She should have clear understanding about the scope of work. Uh, in order to relate well with the boss, she should be able to understand the work that she is required to do well. She should have clear understanding and should be kept fully informed of the executive's deals uh, to be uh, to be used uh, to be used so she should also be able to to understand the the executive dealings how the, the the executive deals with the clients and the dealings that he has in the business so that in case the the boss is away she's able to undertake the dealings 
of the organization. She should be able to attend training courses to update skills and uh, for career development uh, in order to relate well with her boss. In the case she has little skills, there are some, uh, some of the, the activities or some of the duties that she cannot carry out well, she should be ready to train go for attend training courses in order to improve her, her skills and her career in order to relate well with his boss to avoid complaints uh, from her boss should be re relied on by the executive in uh, in attending office meetings and other functions so the secretary all the time she is relied upon by the boss and also by the members of the meeting uh, in attending all the meetings and all functions so the secretary should not miss any meeting uh, at all time because we we expect her to take the minutes of the meeting uh, uh, whatever will be discussed during the meeting so she should not miss the meeting at any cost should be uh, should set high standards of conduct and efficiency for uh, for the office uh, staff by being neat and tidy in appearance in order to enhance good reputation of the organization she should set high standards that is by being a role model to the other staff and also uh, to the to the to the boss to the executive so we are saying that uh, she should set high standards of conduct the way she conducts herself and also the efficiency of the work, the work that she does. The, our work should always be neat and also tidy. Uh, our physical appearance, our smart appearance should also uh, be another thing to consider in order to avoid complaints and also to create good reputation of the organization. That uh, there is good com uh, reputation even from the people outside there then should be allowed to use the initiative to solve problems. In, we have talked about the initiative where we have said that uh, when you use your own initi initiative, you use your common sense. You are able to come up with a solution of a complicated issue. So you use your own initiative without uh, the intervention of your, your boss or any other person. And then we have the relationship with the staff the colleagues that she works with. A good secretary should always relate well with her colleagues by being cooperative. She should cooperate and respect one another. She should be that person who can cooperate with other staff uh, in all the activities, in all uh, uh, functions that they are uh, undertaking in the organization, and also respect one another regardless of their position and regardless of their uh, their life. So you, she should be that person who is cooperative and respectful to one another in order to create good relationship uh, with her, her colleagues. The other one, she should guard against divulging confidential information through refraining from gossip. So by she should avoid gossiping, in other words. She should avoid gossiping because this one, this gossiping will lead her to disclose the confidential matters of the, of the, the other colleagues, the confidential matters of their, their personal life, and this one, they will not be happy with her. So she should avoid such in order to have good relationship with her colleagues. So she should avoid gossiping completely in order to guard against disclosing the confidential information of either the colleagues or of the organization or of our boss. Uh, she should also avoid entering into conversation about work. That is uh, avoid complaining, complaints and conflicts about the work. That she gives excuses about the work she is supposed to do. So she should avoid such complaints and excuses. Then, she, in case of uh, grievances, she should follow the lead procedures to solve the problems. So, in the case of any grievances, any problem between the colleagues 
and the organization in case of complaints from the, the, the other staff, she should follow the corrective procedure in order to solve the problem, even on behalf of the executive. Uh, that is another thing she should do. And this one, in case she solves the grievances well, then she'll have good relationship with the other colleagues. The other one is by uh, to encourage juniors by praising their work when it is good, and when work is not up to the standard, expect to use qualities of fact and diplomacy to point out the problems and help the juniors to improve their performance. So she should encourage the, the young ones, the juniors, who are working below him or her, by making sure that when they perform well, if they, they, are, they do their work well, she can appreciate them. She praised them and she show appreciation of their good work. And in the case where they have not done their work well, she can find a way to correct them and help them to improve on their work. By using a diplomacy in order to point out such weaknesses or such problems. Then the other one is induct the juniors to make them aware of functions of the firms and also its structures and lines of communication and also uh, the rules and also the, sec the, the regulations, welfare and medical and first aid facilities, amenities, grievances, procedures, consultation, conditions of service, training, further education, career development, all that. So she should be ready to induct them. When you talk about induct, is from the word induction cause. Induction, induction cause. Induction cause is the short cause that you are uh, taken through uh, for a short while. While you are, an, you are new employee in an organization, you are, you are sh uh, trained on how the organization is, uh, is, uh, is organized. You are also trained on how it is structured, the lines of communication. You are able to it. You are able to uh, to be made aware where you are supposed to begin in case you want to communicate. In case of any complaints, the lines of communication or the channel of communication, either from the top, uh, uh, downward communication or upward communication, when it comes to the organizational uh, in the organizational hierarchy. And uh, you, she, she should also train them on the rules and regulations of the organization, the welfare of the organization, the staff welfare, and also the medical covers, anything to do with the first aid kits where possible, so that in case of anything, in case of emergency, in case of accidents, they can handle their, they can help their friends. In case of uh, any amenities, any amenities in the organization, grievances, procedures, and in case of consultation, where should they consult? So she will be able to, to explain all that to them. And also, in case there are trainings uh, that are supposed to be carried out in the organization, she should also help them. And also, in case of any further education, should also help them and career development. The last part that we have said is about a uh, safeguard for handling confidentiality. Safeguard for handling confidentiality. And this is where now we have said that uh, a good secretary should safeguard the confidential matters of the organization, the confidential matters of the, the boss, and also the confidential matters of our fellow colleagues in order to maintain good relationship. So the, the one of the ways to safeguard, number one, is to follow and implement security and confidentiality procedures all the time. So she should find her way and the procedures that she should follow in order to safeguard. There must be some procedures that she should implement. Such so should be followed and also implemented in the organization. Or now she should safeguard such confidential uh, documents, confidential information where possible. The other one is do not leave confidential records lying around when leaving the office. 
she should avoid leaving the confidential records or documents lying all over in the office. Another one is uh, please confidential records in a folder to avoid them seen by onlookers. In case she has some uh, confidential documents or records, she should keep them in a folder where no onlooker, no somebody, no unauthorized person will be able to to see them or to come uh, to access to them. The other one is uh, classify and control confidential private or secret records by making them accordingly by mark uh, by by marking them accordingly so she should also class confidential those are uh, uh, records which are confidential she should uh, separate them or keep them aside and also put a mark on them to show that these are confidential documents that anybody else will be able to see them then the position you are desk to avoid visitors from reading confidential documents while process. So, in the case where she's uh, working on the confidential documents in a desktop, in a computer, she should make sure that uh, she position her desk in a way that uh, when she is seated on this side, the other the visitor sits on the other side that he cannot see, uh, he cannot see or read. The confidential documents while it is being processed in that computer then the other one she should supervise visitors to avoid them left alone in the office she should not leave the visitors in the office alone she should supervise them and make sure she stays around with them until they leave the office because if they are left in the office they can uh, they can uh, Look at the, those confidential documents that we like to, to safeguard them. The other one is uh, if confidential work should be copied, the secretary should uh, should do it uh, herself. So in case you have to make copies or to duplicate the confidential work, then the secretary should not delegate that to any other person, but she should do it uh, uh, personally. Another one, when asked of confidential information by a stranger, use tact and diplomacy to avoid the questions and express neglect having no authority to supply such. So the secretary should be in a position to use a tactic and diplomacy to avoid any stranger who asks about confidential information. Somebody may ask you about your, your business about your boss so she should use her diplomacy her wisdom to avoid such a questions in order not to disclose uh, uh, the, the confidential matters of the boss or of the organization the other one she should take care when supplying confidential information on the phone when she's uh, passing on a confidential message through the telephone through the call she should be careful that is by making sure that around where she's uh, uh she's passing the information through the phone there are no strangers ar uh, around or people who are not authorized to hear the the message then any confidential uh any confidential secrets or documents that are no longer required should be destroyed by shredding machine or burned in an incinerator. So there are some of the documents which are very confidential and sometimes after having attended to them and they are no longer in use, these documents should be destroyed and we use a shredding machine to destroy them or we burn them in an incinerator uh, where they cannot be seen again. Then avoid the confidential telephone conversation overheard by by other people so we have talked about that that uh, you should avoid other people who are around to hear the conversation that you make through the phone the other one should take care of computerized document data or records uh, or recorded data uh, dictated through the machine so you should avoid the computerized data computerized confidential document 
So you take care of it by making sure that you put a password where possible that nobody who can open that document who can get access to that document where possible. Inform your manager of any uh, breaches immediately uh, immediately once are uh, brought to your attention. So in case you realize that it's like the confidential information of the office is like it is breached out. It's like people are getting the confidential matters of the office through either photocopying, through whichever the source. You are supposed to inform your boss immediately in order to find a way to safeguard such. Then when using computerized data, keep backup or uh, duplicate disk in a secure place. Keep backup duplicate disk in a secure place. So the backups that you, you use, when you are, you are saving the confidential computerized data should be kept secure and I have said that lastly you should use passwords should be used only uh, to be known by the user alone. You should not uh, disclose your password. If you use a password to safeguard your document in the computer then you should, you should make sure that you, you it is not known to any other person, only you. And that marks the end of our unit, of our, our topic. That was a short topic. And then below there, you are going to, uh, to have a quiz, just one quiz. You are going to discuss it. You're going to make some groups and you discuss the question and then submit the answers later. Uh, this is the question. Discuss the importance of good grooming to a secretary. Discuss the importance of good grooming to a secretary. And then make sure you submit the, the discussion online. And I wish you all the best. Thank you for listening till we meet in the next lesson. Thank you.